Stand this morning, look to the Lord in prayer. Are there any needs as we would go to the Lord this morning? I know there's always something, but uh, it never, it's never t- uh, too late or never too much to keep asking the Lord. So praise the Lord. All right, you're all prayed up for, then let's just remember to pray for one another. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, Lord, before Thee, we thank You, Lord, for Your Word, Lord. We thank You, Lord, for Your Spirit. We thank You, Lord, for a place that we can assemble, and Lord, and fellowship around Thee. Lord, we have come here to sing the songs of Zion, give Thee praises and honor and glory. Lord, remember those that couldn't be here, and even Thy nation Israel at this time. Now we commit the service in Your hands, and that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. I'm going to ask, uh, I believe it's Brother Mike. Two thirteen in the red book.
die to pardon you and me. All alone in agony, he taught. And a world once lost in sin can now be Number 308 in the red book.
friends I love so dear Comfort I get from God's own word Yet when I face the chilling hand of death Tell me
And I'm, I'm so happy this morning that Jesus Christ, He set me free. He set us free. Sometimes we take things for granted. I know I take things for granted. Last night, my wife and I, we watched the movie. And I know maybe some of you may be thinking, watching the movie. But sometimes God speaks to me through a movie. Sometimes there's a message there that it's just not for an entertainment, but it can be for a, a lesson. Last night, the movie is called They Shot My Father First. It's based on a true story. It was taking place in Cambodia, Cam, in the 70s or 80s. And it was depicting a family, this particular family, but it affected everybody in that area. The rebels came in one day, and all the children, the fathers and mothers, they had no choice. Their liberty was taken away. They couldn't be allowed to take their possessions, things that were valuable, they were not allowed. They didn't have no choice. But we have a choice. And I thank God that he gave us a choice. Amen. That we could choose life or we could choose death. We could choose to say yes or we could choose to say no. And I am so thankful this morning that God knew. He knew me before the, even before the foundation of the world. Yeah. He knows what is in my heart. And I thank God this morning that he has set me free. He has brought me out of a total darkness and I'm talking about the Catholic Church, the greatest darkness that there ever is upon the face of the earth. He brought me out of that. It had nothing to do with me. But when God called me, and he anointed my eyes to see, and he touched my heart, I could no longer stay in that system. I was under bondage, and I didn't even know it. But God set me free. He set all of us free. And we have the liberty to worship God in, in spirit and in truth. And Brother Mike, this morning I wonder if I could sing a song. Are you an eagle this morning? Do you have wings? God gave us wings to fly. To fly a little higher above all of this turmoil and all of this what's going on in the world. God wants us to fly a little higher. Draw closer to him. Leave these things behind. I could not say this if I didn't really mean this. God is helping me to lift my wings a little higher, to fly a little higher. We all have that choice. We can lift up our wings and we can fly a little high. We can. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. This day. Praise God. There are many of ordain who are eagles, so they say. But I wonder if they heard that great eagle cry out with God's holy word. Fly, little eagle, fly. Oh, rise into the sky. Oh, set your wings. Oh, hear that sound. Something's coming. It can lift you from the ground. Oh, I know it won't be long. For my wings are growing strong. Oh, soon that call will come from that
Mr. Wender, you have a song. I have this mic. Could I have the mic, mic? <laughs> Make it pure as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Make me pure as gold, pure gold. Refiner's fire. My heart's one desire. To be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Purify my heart, cleanse me from within, and make me holy. Purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin, deep within, Purify my heart, 
cleanse me from my sin deep within refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy set apart for choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. I'm ready to do going to ask, um, would Brenda and Crystal and Jana be able to sing together? Do they do a song? No, I don't. <laughs> In the red book.
I'll praise the Lord. Uh, we're gonna, I know there was questions about the Bible study and uh, uh, or the Thursday night meeting, so we're going to start uh, this week coming. Last week, uh, I know I couldn't be uh, available for it, so. But now everything's back to normal, as much as what people call normal. So praise the Lord. Um, all right, let's just bow our head. Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this morning, we thank you, Lord, for all the things you do for us, Lord. Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray, Lord, that you would help this vessel of clay to bring out the thoughts, Lord, that you've laid upon my heart. And Lord, that things be of you. And if it's not, Lord, then you strike it for the minds of the people. For ask it now in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this morning I pray. Amen and amen. Can we see it this morning? As far as the earth is concerned, how many knows here in Canada what time it is? I'm not talking about your watch. It's harvest time, isn't it? And in harvest time, now I'm not a farmer, but I mean, I've planted a few seeds before, and, and us farmers, we see that in this time of the year. And so when it comes to harvest time, Usually you expect a crop to grow. Let's say if you put a tomato seed in there, you don't expect to have just one tomato at the end. Unless it's a good, perfect one. But I, I'm putting jesting all aside. If you plant one cucumber seed, you don't expect one cucumber, do you? It's the same like wheat. If a, if a grain of wheat is sown into the ground, when the wheat comes at harvest time, there's more than one grain comes off of the harvest of the wheat. Jesus used that principle, which in nature reflects, spiritually speaking, what God wants to do as well. Now we can look at sowing and harvest in the term of the grace age. The word was sown in the beginning. But from the different parables we read, the Lord expects at the end an increase. And the increase that the Lord expects, it's not just in revelatory words or prophecies, but also in our growth, in our human development as well, as well. But when it comes to the grace age that we're looking at, we know that the, the parable of Matthew 25 predominantly talks about the early church, which Jesus, he sowed talents in the early church or he gave them talents. And he told them that once they get to a place that they've grown enough, go out and have an increase. Now that don't mean you have increase every day or every time, but increase usually takes place, yes, over a series of time, a bit of time, but somewhere there has to be an increase involved. And when we look at the parable of Luke, chapter 19, that's in our day. We're in the harvest time. We're not in sowing time. And so therefore the Lord's concentration is really on harvest. He wants to see more fruit, doesn't he? Now I'm just look, using that as a groundwork here this morning for something that I felt to look at this morning. What do we expect? What does the Lord expect of you and me? We're going to go through a little 
review if you want to, not, not in a sense of review. Now we can use this, it's just a, a chart to use as a, as a reference point if you want to. We were all at one point babes in Christ, weren't we? And it's the Lord that called upon our hearts that pulled the child of God. We may have come from different avenues, but is God seen his child know that he would respond in the proper time when he would move upon that child that he would come to him and start believing the word of God. The first thing we needed to learn that we need the Holy Spirit and how that, that Holy Spirit is that power that's going to change your life. The Holy Spirit was not just there for signs and wonders. And it's wonderful for signs and wonders. That's just part of the lifting up that God will do. But as we are babes, as we came to the Lord as babe in Christ, how wonderful that was. I don't know about you, but oh my, it felt so good. No guilt, no trials, no fuss. Lord's wonderful, praise the Lord. But little did I realize I couldn't stay in the state that I was, that I needed growth, and growth needed to become by trials and tests and the Word of God, as you would, as each child of God would go on. Now, yes, there's the starting point. But then there comes a time when God has settled you to a certain point of life as He's picked you up, given you that new birth, and the new birth, as the prophet told, uh, spoke about tongues, is not an evidence of the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus himself in John chapter 3, when he says, he told to Nicodemus, uh, how, if you can't tell where the wind goes back and forth, neither can you tell someone that receives the Spirit of God. In other words, nor can we tell a child of God whether he is born again or not born again. It's God that knows who is born again. And he's not saying, well, I, yeah, I'm going to let everybody know. We, we see it by the, the fruits of that child of that life as it grows, that that child is born again. And somewhere in his life, as he moves now from a babe into, it's okay if I use teenage years. So not too many teenagers, but it's okay. So when we, is God that has an appointed time that when we are babe, he, he, he covers us, he, he, he comforts us. Not very many hard trials you face then. But then he brings us to a place where we are un, under tutorship or governors. All right? Yeah. And while we're under tutorship and, and under governors, now the governors and the tutorship Jesus doesn't come and does it himself, but there's angels sent to minister to the individual as well as to the ministry that God will use at the time. While, now, I'm using this, it cannot be applicable to depending how God picks up a child and in the generation he's in. And the tutorship in this hour is a whole lot more complex than it was in the days of Peter and Paul. Because the tutorship that God learned, is learning, teaching us today, is the thing that he, you have come into. And under tutorship, yes, there may be a few more harder trials to take place. But God sort of like covers you or I to stay in a revelatory truth that while you are learning under tutorship, a lot of things are brought to you. And when they're brought to you, that same Holy Ghost that when you were a babe that accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, now sees those truths that comes in. All right, he says, where are you going with this this morning? Somewheres. 
But why am I looking at the three stages? Now, while you're sitting under governors or tutors or under a ministry, not a person, but in a move of God, let's put it this way, let's say under Brother Branham's, there's a lot that was hearing his message, and they were under tutorship. How wonderful things we're, we're hearing and so forth. And God's more or less sheltered that area of truth for the believers for a period of time. But that generation that was under tutorship, I'm using that as an example, as now God removes that servant off the scene that they've been, not that they trust the they, they trust a servant, but they know that through that servant, the Lord is using to work. Now, as that servant is taken off now, because what is God, God doing at that point in time? When he removes the governor that he used to bring you under tutorship and governors, now the Lord feels you are now seasoned enough to start walking in the light because those that have been under tutorship now it's going to be the ministry that's going to be walking that's going to be teaching and walking in the in the light that was given now this is where i want to touch this morning in Matthew 25. Yes, that's pointing to the early church. That was the sowing time. And we're going to be looking at the harvest time. But we're going to look at as how the Lord is, looks upon when he gives something in a certain period of time. He's talking about there was wise servants that was given one talent. He increased to, to one. One was given five talent. He increased to five. So five to five, one to one. That plays into the revelation as well as sevenfold light. Because we can see in that parable in Matthew 25 that they increased from what was given to them to another dimension of another level of one fold of what they had, or five to five is a ratio of one to one. All right? But we're going to see in the other parable, it's seven to one is the average. I know we all know about the good servant. He's going to receive a reward, and praise the Lord, he's going to be found in the millennium. But I want to look at a little deeper this morning about this servant here. Then he which had received one talent, where did he receive it? Huh? When did he receive that one talent? Now a talent means revelation, means me. And after the Lord Jesus Christ has went up to glory, he spoke from heaven to the apostle of the hour, even up to John on the Isle of Patmos. But then it comes to the place It's while they were under tutorship that God gave them that one talent for that ministry is to be. All right? Because it says here, and they which had received one talent, they, how, they received it from the Lord. And in receiving that one talent, the Lord's not saying, now I want you to increase while you're, you're getting that one talent. First of all, there had to be a period of time where that 
child of God or that servant is going to receive that one talent. Now, I know it main, these parables mainly deal with the ministry. But I must remind you, whatever ministry God uses, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives the same reward, receives the same revelation. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man receives the same reward as the righteous man does. So that puts the believer as well as the ministry in the same place. And the ministry and the believer are all being tutored of given that talent by the Lord. Yes, it's all from God, the great eternal spirit, which reveals it to his son, and to his son is now sends angels to send it to an earthly recipient that now gives that revelation forth. So there would be a crop that was under tutorship, and they will not always remain under tutorship. They will go forth and bring forth more, more talent, more revelation. All right. Now, then he that received one talent said, Lord, I know that thou art a hard man. Now he's, the parable is looking at a condition on the earth. While we're receiving that talent, wow, that's wonderful. That's great. But along with what we're receiving, the Lord says, hey, I want you to increase. You will no longer be, there will come a time you'll be no longer under tutorship, but now you will move, be moving in your ministry. I will still be leading and still feeding, and you will increase in talents. Now, yes, as most of the time I speak, it's, it's in terms of revelation. But there's also an increase in the walk as well. Because with the word comes also an increase in the walk as well as the revelation. Because if you don't have the revelation right, how can you walk right? Right? You think a Catholic person can walk right in what he knows from there? No. And no disrespect to the Catholic people because God has not opened their eyes. All right? So we're seeing that clearly so far. And so then, here the servant, he says, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. Now, the reaping where he didn't sow would be future. Because God gave him a talent, and then he's going to be looking at what that's going to be used for. And gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. Why would this servant or servants be afraid or believer be afraid? What makes a person afraid? Doesn't the Bible teach you and I? There is no fear in love. Right? Now that's not the lovey-dovey love. But that's the love for the fresh word of God. Because once you see it, there's no fear. But if you don't see it, there is fear. Because it causes confusion to the person that can't see. Are you awful quiet this morning? Well, that's nice. Praise the Lord. So he says, I was afraid and went and hid thy talent. Now that's just using words to express. Here's one, whether it's in the ministry or a servant or a believer. God had taught him under tutorship. He's given that talent. But he's always been looking at a source that it would come from. But now... God has moved the legs out of under them, and now they're going forth, and now they have to depend not on a voice at which they were receiving truth with. Now they have to depend on the Spirit of God that would show them things to come. And if under tutorship, whether the believer or the servant didn't 
come to the place of trusting the spirit that you have to know what truth is, the time when he comes out that the Lord is moving you out from tutorship, now, oh, you might not have learned how to trust that spirit that leads you. And so therefore you become afraid of believing whatever is new. You follow? Now he said he hid it in the earth. That talent he had, he, he didn't hide it in the sense that put it in the hole, but he just stayed with that talent. And where there's no increase, death starts to set in. Discouragements, there's no moving forward, there's no looking for a harvest. All right? All right, so that's one of them here. He says, I was afraid and hid thy talent in the earth, and lo, thou, there's thou has that that is thine. Now, here it is yours. That you gave me. Well, the Lord knows what is his. But why is he saying here is yours? Because that's all he grew into. He never saw the law of increase, sowing and reaping. That's why Jesus used those parable often enough. That's why we can't just sit still and be happy in a little revelation, just like the Pentecostal church or the Baptist church or the, Pen or the, or the uh, Brandon movement or even the Jackson movement. If we have not moved and had not had the, learned how to trust that Holy Spirit, when the Lord moves on, then that servant or that believer becomes afraid. He's afraid to make a mistake and try to look into something. And because he's afraid, he'll use all kinds of excuses or different ideas saying, well, we got what we need and we, we got the message. Do you? Do we? Even in this late hour, are we to stay in what we've been tutored? Or does still God wants us to increase? He sure does. So that's the, math, the parable in Matthew. Now we go to Luke. Now in Luke, yes, the Lord doesn't call it talents because the reason he used talents and pounds is he wanted to so show the difference between the early church that truth was given to them from the latter end of the church. Now pounds and talents has very much to do with the voice of God bringing divine fresh revelation. There's no such things as giving talents or pounds during the other church ages from Samaria to Philadelphia. First of all, we can find In Hebrews 12 and 25, where it talks about, see that you refuse not him from speaking from heaven, because if those that, that refuse him or spoke on heaven didn't have a well outcome, if you want to, then it says, much more shall we not escape if we turn from him that speaketh from heaven. When did the Lord start speaking from heaven? That's your shout. This is going to be the voice of Isaiah 52 and 8. Because the voice, they're going to lift up the voice. What voice are they going to lift up? God's voice. The Lord's voice. And so that voice started in 1963 and did not stop for you that say, well, we got the message and it's just what Brother Jackson and Brother Brown brought. You're in the position where that servant is saying, Here's your talent. I'm not moving any further. 
this will start to strike and it'll start to, over time, gradually go downwards. We've used the parable of the sowing and the reaping, how God wants an increase. Well, those laws are affected with time because there's a time for sowing and there's a time for reaping. But I'm going to bring something more closely that we can observe. We've seen, especially in this generation, companies that was built upon good principles. When I think of Eaton and Sears here in Canada, or the Hudson Bay Company, they had put their outlook on giving good quality product and having a response for their customers. And so they built their foundation on it. But as time changed, they did not want to move on from their structure. And so over time, they started getting less and less revenues till they started getting smaller and smaller, and some have gone by the way of the dodo bird or the dinosaur. It's the law of God that things that move you have to perceive what is coming ahead. Now, for instance, Sears. They had everything in place. They could have been at the head of the game before Amazon or eBay. But they said, no. We're going to ride on what we know and are in our, our, our business. We don't need that. And the minute they stopped and they didn't see the time or the season they're living in, they're now... Sears is but a shell company. Is Eaton still exists? No, they don't. So. so there's a lot of companies. I've seen companies like that that have a wonderful product, wonderful outlook, but fail to see their day. The same thing is repeated in the religious realm. Once a movement sees the truth and organize around it and can't see God moving on, Eventually, they die off spiritually. No, they've still got numbers. If you look at the Pentecostal church, they've got numbers. Oh, we've got numbers. But God's not looking at numbers. Deaths start to strike. People get hungry. If there's no fresh meat, then the only thing that can happen is just like a man that's eating. If you don't get food after a while, then you start to wean and get weaker and weaker till you are set over there and going to be not moving on. All right. So now, as we're in the pounds, now look at this, the, the ones in the previous verse of Luke chapter 19 concerning the, the good servants, the wise servant, they were giving rewards to them. But now we're looking at the man that he says here, and another came saying, Lord, behold, thy pound. Again, where did he get the pound? He got his pound while he was under tutorship. That don't mean you begin way back from, uh, from the doctrines of Jesus Christ or the apostles. Because what we've been taught under tutorship in this hour, we've been taught things, his voice been speaking forth new things, things old and things new. And so therefore, in the hour that we live in, we were under that tutorship. Now here's something else too. While we're under tutorship, uh, now I'm looking at our generation, while God had an apostle on the scene, we were coming into a message, we were feeding onto the message, but we were under tutorship. And having that ministry there, more or less, not covered everyone of all time, but as a whole, as the generation is concerned, 
we were protected by God of the things how they were coming. And in Matthew, it's in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, where it says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And the same thing as for a righteous man. But here's what I want to show. Because there's been different ideas about receiving things new and old. While under the ministry of Brother Jackson, those that were growing under tutorship and governors, you weren't in your ministry yet. Even the believer, as well as the potential ministry, was receiving things new and old, right? Isn't that right? Of course it is. Is it because you got it yourself? God used a main voice, but because you believe what God was using that for, to for yourself, you are, were receiving things new and old. But it was an apostle ministry that God was using it to bring it. Now whether there's no onus on the one that God uses, more so than the one that receives it. Because you're receiving the same reward. All right? So while under tutorship, according to Luke chapter 19, we were given pounds. Weren't you given mighty revelations? But now that God has took that servant off the scene, now we've moved over here. What are we doing with the pounds? Are we just holding back and saying, I'm, keep, I'm just staying in the realm of my pound. I'm staying in the realm of Brother Brown and Brother Jackson's ministry. God's not finished. That voice that spoke from heaven didn't stop with Brother Branham, didn't stop with Brother Jackson, and it will continue on in the fivefold ministry. And it's all one voice, and that is all that one message. It's still ongoing. But refusing or working against what God's bringing in pounds for gaining, as now those have been under tutorship, whether believer or ministry, as we move in that realm, yes, God's going to bring fresh meat. Amen. But that fresh meat is not going to be to every ministry that's going to get things new and old. They will receive it by that main voice, just like it was in the days of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson, the same way. But the Spirit of God will give you the same revelation of things old and things new. And so it happens now to this generation that we are living in now. If we've been just, yes, we knew that he was an apostle. And yes, the Spirit of God confirmed that was truth coming forth. But now that he's removed that, now they got nowhere, if you've got nowhere to look and don't, have, don't know how that Spirit is to speak things new, now you speak of that, oh yeah, this whole bunch of people have different ideas, there's all kinds of ideas running around. Yes, that always will be. But somewhere there has to be the right ones. God didn't stop at the border 2005. I'm here to tell you that this morning. God is moved on. But everything, every time God moves on, there's always opposition. There's opposition of a terror element. There'll be opposition of those that hid their pound because they don't want to move on. And you won't hear those that are that hiding their pound. You'll never hear them speak of the revelation of the hour. Why? Something is missing. It's trusting in that Holy Spirit that gives the truth to the believer and is up because, well, Brother Ray, do you think that's right there? Oh, it is? Okay, thank you. I believe it now. You can't go down that route in this hour that we live in. We're living at the last part of it here. Well, 
Is this making sense to you? I don't know, but. So there was, now, not that they were babes. I used the same uh, pictures there. But under that first watch, that's under Brother Branham. That's when the voice that starts speaking from heaven started in 1963. That voice speaking from heaven did not start speaking in 1948. It spoke in the sense that it restored truth. But now God has moved from restoring truth to prophetic truth after 63. We don't neglect the restoring part. It is all part of God's word, yes. But somewheres, we have to see what God's doing in the hour that we're living in. Because if we see no more truth than 2005, you will start to get weaker. And some people have more, how can I put it, more strength to, to stand the tide than others. You'll start seeing some weaning away. Why are they weaning away? Because they're dying. They're looking for fresh meat. It's what makes the bride alive. And what makes people want to be hungry? For truth. God's not dead. He didn't shut off the sound from heaven. Not in the hour that we live in. We're moving on further. So praise the Lord. So you and I basically... Our generation, or my generation, we were under tutorship under the ministry of Brother, Bra Brother Jackson. But now we are no longer under tutorship. The Lord is seeing the servants as well as the believer. What are you doing now? Do you have an increase? Or do you have no increase just waiting for the Lord to come for certain things to be fulfilled? God will fulfill his word whenever things that was prophesied to. But that don't make you moving on. That makes you holding right there, running in circles. Why, if I didn't care about the believers out wherever in the sound of my voice, I would just preach it here, be quiet, preach. And if I had to go on the internet, I'll preach a nice love sermon. Don't disturb nobody. But I do care that we need to see what God's doing in this hour. That's why I feel the burden to speak this way. It's time to wake up. Time to come alive. Well, now there's another part that I want to deal with this morning. I uh, touched on Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll start at the 10th verse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Now, Paul knew that he was that master builder. It was self-evident by the revelation that he brought forth. And those that was under his ministry was under tutorship while he was starting out. He says, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. So to build upon that foundation, Paul didn't say, well, I'll just build on the same foundation I have. Yes, we've got to build on the same foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if that's all they would have done in that hour, they would not have went nowhere. But Paul was that voice or that master builder that God was using to do that building with. I have laid the foundation, another buildeth there upon. How do you build upon something? That means you've added something to it. It means you have increased. That means you sow, they're sowing and then there's harvest. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. Now, how do we take heed 
how do we build upon it? Oh, I've got to be careful what I preach. Take heed that there is going to be an increase. The Lord expects of every servant and every believer an increase. You follow? Let every man take heed. That's the heed that we have to take care of. We can't say, well, I didn't know, Lord, that you wanted me to increase. Now, that don't mean I may be the voice that brings the new revelation or things in old. But I'm in that period of time where things are being said that I hear it and receive it as well. Just like when you're under tutorship, you receive things new and old. Under Brother Jackson's ministry, and I can, I'm saying that this morning because you there sitting here this morning can relate to that period of time. But that repeats itself down through. All right, <clears throat> getting a little hoarse. Now, Paul is saying, no other foundation can, can a, no man laid that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's your starting point. But Paul started with that also. But he built upon it. And then future servants that he's talking about, that they should build upon even what Paul. Not to outrun Paul, but as God would, he's the one that gives the increase. As he leads with the Spirit, the Comforter will show you things to come. Not every day, not every week, not every month necessarily. But somewhere in your lifetime, or after you move from tutorship and into going into this being seasoned, full grown, going out, then there's somewheres over the course of years, there should be an increase. All right. <clears throat> now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, In a man that builds on gold, silver, and precious stones is a man that builds on the precious things of God. And therefore, when the test comes, because it comes from God and they build on the things of God, it will not burn. But if a man builds on wood, hay, and stubble, when the fire or the trials come, it's going to burn. Now we look at this verse here. We look at gold, silver, and precious, st and precious stones. That's bride. Yes, it is. But we're looking here, remember Luke 19 is predominantly pointing towards the time of the end. When we're dealing with the pounds. What is the goal in the silver in this hour? It's what someone has built thereupon. Brother Branham built some things thereupon, what Paul had taught, and he had an increase. And as far as, as a reminder again, the restoring of the doctrines of the apostle has been restored for 54 years. We can't always be just there. You're not in sowing season. We are in reaping season, harvest. Now, wood, hay, and stubble in this hour, because we're moving to the time that that seventh seal is going to be broke one day. Looking at the end result, not so much the time frame, but the end result of those that build on gold, silver, and precious stone, as the seventh seal is broke, is here on earth. Luke 19 depicts when Jesus comes, having received the kingdom, then he judges the servants that are on the earth, which is the quick, which whether they be on gold, silver, 
or precious stone. But what about the servant? Along with that, those servants that have been de dealt with gold, precious stones, and, and so forth, silver, there's those that build on hay, wood, and stubble. That has to exist. Somebody has to fulfill that role, just as well as those that have to fulfill gold, silver, and precious stones. But wood, hay, and stubble, they're going to burn. And Paul is talking about every man's work shall be made manifested for the day shall declare. What day? The day of the judgment. Before the judgment seat of Christ. For our rewards. And if you have a reward, you end up ruling in the millennium. If your work, whether a believer or a servant, has built on wood, hay, and stubble, and it burns up, then that material is gone. There is no reward for him. And if there is no reward for him, is he still a bride? No. Because only those that rule and reign with Christ has a reward. But the elements on wood, hay, and stubble now don't have no reward. So therefore, they are in the classification now of being a white robe. Now here's what came as I was looking at this. Here we walk into that half hour silence. Those that build on gold, precious stones, they're told you're going to get a reward. He knows his outcome. But to the other, and now it's coming in a half hour silence. His rewards are gone. And when that half hour silence ends, who goes up in the rapture? Get you to think. Only those that would have the reward, because they're bride. Those that has no reward are going through the week of Daniel. They will not lose their white robe ship if you want to. Because Paul goes on speaking a little further. He says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it was revealed by fire, and the fire shall try it. And every man's work, so, uh, work or of what sort it is. If, a man's, if any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now here's the other case. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Not to go up in a rapture, but he is, will be saved. So as by fire that he has to go through. You get it? Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not something new that... It, Brother Branham opened up a certain subject to a point. Brother Jackson opened up to a certain point. But this goes hand in hand with what he said. It don't change the overall picture. Because if it's a picture we can't touch it, you are not moving forward. You are staying that line in 2005. So yes, the voice in Isaiah 52, 8, is the voice that's of Hebrew chapter 12, 25 that spoke. That's the voice Isaiah 52 is going to lift up. They're going to lift up the days of Brother Branham, the days of Brother Jackson, and they're going to lift up the voice of the fivefold ministry in their hour when the time comes that that voice is to be lifted up. Well, I don't know about you, but we're not going to wild things. 
But at the same time, yes, there would be those that were under tutorship once they get out of their ministry that may have ideas that brings in revelation that's not in continuity with what's been revealed. Now those that stay behind the fence of 2005, to them it's all the same thing. They're all saying the wrong things. There's too many voices. I'd have to say that you're not seeing either. Does that mean every servant has to preach what we're, what the Lord has brought into this hour? No, that's not the point. But when it comes to a rejection of it, then I'd ha I start to worry. And God may be raising up a new crop. He did it in the days of Brother Branham. He did it in the days of Brother Jackson. Why couldn't he do the same today? There are young people. Even under tutorship. See what God's doing in this hour. Why not ministries? Are you still happy? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'll keep sharing whatever the Lord lays on my heart to give to you. I'm not going to pull a rabbit out of the, well, let's see, oh, this might sound like a good story here, and, and if I keep making things sound wonderful, I can lift up myself, my foot. <clears throat> If I wanted to do that, I would take every service from Brother Ray. I don't need you to preach anymore. I've got to preach small, and uh, I, I, we'll, we'll put out things to, make, to bring this bigger and everything else. God has did his own advertisement. And when I look at the chart of those that listen in, during, not necessarily on Sunday, but during the week, there was 189 and not all from North America. Not all are, some of them are just out of curiosity. But surely some of those are, are people that God is, is raising up, that's listening in, and what is looking at truth. Do you know who they are? No, not all of them. I know some in the area, some areas. But some areas, I don't know who they are. And it's not that I need to know who they are. are. I thank God that they, there is those that will listen to what God is saying in this hour. Well, so whether you're a believer or whether you're a servant, the Lord has that laying ever since the grace age started. Uh, he wants to see an increase. And if I'm trying to make an increase and it's not my ministry, it's going to flop. But if it's God's word, you can't destroy it. It'll go hand in hand. I'm thankful. It's not of intelligence. If God don't inspire a thought and we're looking into his word, then there's nothing a man can do. And I don't want anybody hang on my coattails either. If I had my wish, I'd say, Lord, take me out of the ministry. Let me just play my guitar. I like doing that. And you that have gifts that helps build up the church, not just the preaching, like Brother York was saying, your testimony. The songs, those that have talents, yes, they're on the natural side, but they uplift the body. I don't know about you, I'm, the pastor's no different than, than the believer. When you hear a, an anointed song, praise God. I don't mean I have to shout and dance and, and do a jig. Now that's something else too. Uh, well, no, maybe I'll deal with that quietly besides that. There's some, some things. There's some things you noticed. 
But where to get to the point when it gets, things get out of hand a little bit, you have to make a correction. It's not made to hurt you. It's just to make, hey, maybe I'm slipping in uh, an area that I once had that now you no longer have. And now you don't know what I'm talking about? Good. Then search your souls. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, the Holy Ghost is the best teacher, isn't he? Yeah. There's nothing I can say going to change your mind or make you change. But he can break, speak to you and I much stronger than any preacher can. All right, let's just stand at this time. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again. I pray, Lord, that use the words that were spoken as you would see fit. Lord, I thank you for your inspiration, Lord, your leadership, Lord. I thank the Lord that you have not left us, Lord, without food in our time. Now, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you be with my brothers and sisters. In the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. And you can be seated now. Have the musicians to come again. We'll start the uh, Thursday night meetings uh, starting this week. So everyone's welcome. Praise the Lord.
had a request to sing the chorus in uh, number 59 again in the Red Book. Oh, there's car keys there on the microwave? Yeah. They're cooking? <laughs> okay, okay. No, I just tease It's okay. All right. Let's just stand at this time. I'm going to ask Brother York to come dismiss the word of prayer.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, again for this day and for all the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for thy great Holy Spirit, Lord, that you have placed within us to give us a life, Lord, that's abundant. You said the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but you have come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Father, we thank you for that today. Thank you, Lord, for each one that came, and, and thank you for your word, Lord, this day, and for everything that you have done for us. We ask you to go with us, Lord, as we leave the building and travel on the highway. Keep us, Lord, until we meet again in your care. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you.